Welcome everyone, it's Chris Petri. Thanks for coming by. Hey, we're gonna have a fantastic time today. We're gonna do this beautiful farm scene and uh, it's real simple. We're doing some glazing washes and then some detailed washes with our painting. And uh, it's an easy step-by-step -step approach. Uh, whether you're new or you've been painting a while, you really have a fun time with this. It's really a great painting to try. Um, simple color scheme, not too many colors. Uh, and the washes are kind of uh, also um, pretty simple, not too um, detailed. So this is the painting. I'll remove this here. Just to uh, mention, if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button below. This way you get my videos as they come out each week. Um, we have new uh, videos every week, different subject matter. We do all types of watercolors, all types of techniques here. You'll learn a tremendous amount and you can apply that to your watercolors and you'll have a beautiful time painting watercolor as you uh, learn and grow here at this channel. So again, uh, also, um, if you hit this uh, notification bell next to the subscribe button, that also will let you know exactly when the video comes out so you can watch it at your convenience and you'll know exactly when it is uh, first coming out uh, for, for viewing. Okay, so this is the finished painting. And you could take a photograph of this or hit pause and work from this. Or do a screen capture. Okay, so we're going to move right along here. We're um, in the process of uh, starting our pencil drawing. So we're just going to have a real um, simple go of this. This is not too complex here. This is more of a fun, simple composition we're going to do here. So let's start out. Um, I think if anything, we'll make just a few hash marks on our paper. Let's make our uh, our barns and our uh, farm about the height of the buildings, around a quarter of a way above the uh, bottom of the painting. So just to, we're not going to we're going to keep the uh, the buildings and the trees and things low, really low here on the paper. That's about really all to note. So we just make a mark of that saying we're not going to go much beyond a quarter of a way up the paper. And from there we can maybe decide on where we want to go with uh, our some barn structures and maybe a small house. Uh, maybe we'll go about here. So maybe we'll say about here is the barn. And that, that should be fine. And then we'll work the rest, with the rest of the uh, subject matter in as we go. But we're going to keep this real simple. So we'll take, we'll make the barn about here, and we'll just kind of loosely make the bottom of the barn so we have like a foundation. And then. Uh, We're going to scale it down. We're not going to make it too big. So this will kind of be in the distance a bit.
have the lar our large barn door there, maybe a couple other doors over here, a couple windows. And that's really it. That's really our barn shape. It's pretty simple. It's just like a large rectangle, really. And then a small pyramid on top of the So if we were drawing it, it would just be basically the barn is like a just a super long rectangle like that. And then a pyramid about halfway. And then the other half of the barn structure is a lower roof like that. And here we don't see the roof on this side of the, the barn here. This is the gable end of the the barn and then just another rectangle for the door and then a couple small doors and windows you could put anywhere you like not too many though usually barns are sparse with doors and windows and this is going to be a darker dark so that's kind of like the the feel for the barn a triangle and then a long rectangle and another thinner rectangle right here and that's it simple you know it's a simple breakdown of it and then we'll keep going so now we'll work in some tree shapes very loose a couple couple trees over here by the side of the barn and I'll kind of make them the trees are kind of leaning to the right a little bit And the same here. I make the trunk first and then just kind of rough in a little bit the, the trees, the uh, branches and the uh, leaves. And that should be good. So that's like our middle distance. And then maybe here, we'll make another field across here. You can use a ruler to keep things really nice and level and straight across the paper. So I'll, I'll make the, the distant field here a little more accurate, just like that. So this is the middle distance, and then the far distance here is the some of the hills back here. And we're in farmland, so it could be a ranch, a farm, you make it whatever you like. another small house structure here and maybe there's a road that goes here And another driveway here for this barn over here and a couple of trees over here again I'll have them kind of leaning to the right That's good for the drawing. I think that's plenty. We're, we're just kind of uh, a more simple composition here, more fun with the paints, and we'll get started on that in just a second. I'll just make some hash marks here. We're going to make that dark, a, a dark 
total value there for where the barn door is and where the other doors and windows are. And that should be fine. We'll make a large, nice looking graded wash for the sky. All right, so that's the, the pencil drawing. And we'll get started with the painting in just a few minutes. We'll take a quick break and we'll come right back. Okay, we're back. We took a nice break. Take breaks every uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Unless you really feel like you are have really super strong concentration and you can just keep working, that's fine too. Some people uh, really don't need to take breaks, let's say, for, uh, for painting and drawing. You might just be able to kind of uh, motor on through and, and uh, continue. Um, but I think most times, most people will feel it's kind of comfortable to take a little break, relax for a few minutes or so, and then come back. So I like taking breaks myself. Uh, you have to find uh, what, you're, uh, what you like to do as far as when you're drawing and painting. Um, so what I did here is <clears throat> we did the pencil drawing. So that's really, that's the first, first part, getting in some structures, a barn here, and then a smaller barn over here, so we scaled it down. A larger barn here, closer to us in the picture. And then in the distance here, we put another house structure. Um, and that is going to give us that real nice feel of, of distance in the painting, and then we did some distant mountains, and we used a ruler of course to go across the the horizon line back here so we got a nice straight horizon line across and then we put our mountains along that line and that's really all we need for this painting it, it'll, that'll give us enough information that we can just start to go in and paint now what we'll do here is this is a Fabriano uh, extra white paper and it's a uh, rough paper we'll take our Da Vinci uh, one inch um, square brush or flat brush and we'll just uh, wet the paper a little bit here and there not everywhere just we'll get some dampness onto the paper and we'll do the same we'll just work it right down here and there right down over to the that the uh, barns and the structures and the roadway here and the fields. So just a little bit of water here and there. Scrub on some water. Dampen up the paper a little bit. It's going to give us a nice effect. And this will just be the first glazing, so we're not looking to go into much detail at all. We're just going to do some purple. And, and up here we'll do some cerulean blue, so we'll kind of have some cerulean blue here, some purple here, and we'll use some raw sienna over here. And, and that should be good. Raw sienna, cerulean blue, and purple, which is um, ultramarine violet, Windsor & Newton. That's my favorite purple. And we'll get a light wash going here. Just These are nice, the flat brushes, just to put on some wispy sky colors, cerulean blue. And we'll just kind of mix those on. I dip my brush in the water. Now we'll go with a little raw sienna mixed in with that and we'll put in a tiny bit up here too just to but you can see I'm barely doing much here just getting some color on very light washes not a lot of paint and then we'll just keep working that down and then toward the horizon line more of the sienna so I added a little bit more water. 
You can do this with uh, uh, round brushes too, or any, any brush you have, you can do this. This is just a little easier with the flat brush. It kind of cover more area quickly, but you can do this with a round brush too. And let's see, we'll get a little more blue, cerulean blue, just super light wash. And some more raw sienna in the foreground across the barn structures and farmhouses. And that's it. We don't want to go back now. <clears throat> Once you kind of get this first light wash on there, glazing technique, again, we're using the glazing technique. Once you get that first wash, you just start up top. You have, you as you, if you use Fabriano paper or Arches paper or some of the better papers out there, you'll have a little more um, of an easy time getting your washes on and blending things as you go. Um, if you're using like a student grade paper, you might just have to do a real fast wash down one time and not really go back in and fuss too much. The better papers give you more time to go back in and add some touches of color as you're going and take your time a little more. It gives you a little more time to uh, get your washes on and blend things a little more with the better papers. And uh, so that's good though. Let's leave that. Let's let it dry 100%. And then once that is completely dry, we'll come back. We'll start our uh, second glazing, which will be, um, we'll work in the distant mountains and the trees and barn structures. A little bit of the road and some, we'll, maybe we'll get that done on the second glazing and then maybe the final glazing we'll do a little, some bushes and plants and things in the front, maybe some flowers and things in the very, very foreground to give it that real nice uh, dimensional look of foreground, middle ground, middle distance, and then our, our distant mountains and the sky, the big sky. All right, we'll be right back. We're going to let this dry again for about maybe 20 minutes and we'll come right back. Okay, so we're, we're getting uh, started back here. We have our first uh, glazing on, some beautiful sky washes, and we just took the sky washes and brought them right down into the foreground. So we're, we took a break. We're gonna start doing our uh, barn structures and our uh, country houses here, some trees, some distant mountains, and uh, we'll get started. I'm gonna use a number uh, five Da Vinci travel brush for this here. And uh, we'll get started. Let's use some uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna. My mix my colors got mixed up a touch in here. So usually what I do is if, if my colors get a little mixed, I just uh, take a tissue and dip, dip down into the color and just lift up some of the other colors that might have leaked into that well. That looks good. And this is uh, burnt sienna. So we got burnt umber, burnt sienna. We'll put a cerulean blue in that. We'll put a purple. Kind of mix up the same colors we were using before. Raw sienna. And we use a little green. Olive green over here. That should be good. French ultramarine blue, just to get a little darker tonal value. And uh, get some wash on there, maybe go in with a little purple over here, some green, just to get a little different feel for that. And you can see I try to change the colors on the barn here.
warm and cool everywhere. A little bit of cerulean blue, purple. Looks good. We'll, we'll paint the roof uh, a little bit lighter tonal value we'll, and we'll wait for that barn structure here to dry a little bit and let's go over here and we'll do this over here the same thing here we're not going to be too worried about changing the colors it's very small this uh, section here this Maybe it's a little cooler. And this brush has a good point, a really good point, so I can get those details pretty good like that. And I'll infuse a couple little bits of color here and there. I try to blend that bottom a little bit with the for with the ground. And maybe <clears throat> maybe we'll do the mountains, the distant mountains, purple. Blue. That's all just nice and easy, left to right, right across the page, purple, uh, maybe a touch of uh, some raw sienna here and there toward the bottom, and we can even do some further details if we want to the very, very bottom base of the mountains here if we want to, but we don't want to go too, uh, too much detail with this. And so the mountains are a little higher over here, and they're thinner over here on the right. And a little more sienna, raw sienna, just here and there. That looks pretty good. So we've got a lot of really good detail now. The uh, two structures, the two barns. This can be a country house and then the barn over here. And then we have our distant mountains. And now let's do a little bit of our trees. Now with the trees, a really good thing to do is um, practice a few on a separate piece of paper. That's the same paper as you're using. And the reason I say that is uh, trees can be a little difficult to uh, render nicely. So I'm using some French ultramarine blue, olive green, burnt sienna. And we'll just see how this looks if we take our five brush, round brush, and just kind of scrub a few ideas there like that. So that looks pretty good. So now if we can just remember to scrub lightly like this on our paper with our brush to the side, using the side of the brush, 
like that. And then we can make the uh, And that's all. Very quick, effective, easy. Um, less is more. If you know to think of it that way, you the more quickly and effectively you can get these trees painted like this, it's going to look better than spending 20 minutes on one of them. It'll it'll look very um, overworked and and uh, cause a problem because we did very free flowing washes with our sky. And we went pretty quickly with our barn structures and our house here. So we want to keep that same theme going through our painting of just kind of getting things rendered somewhat rapidly and quickly. We wouldn't want to now spend a half an hour trying to paint a tree in here that would look, you know, it wouldn't look like it fits in with the painting. It'll, it'll show up as kind of looking disjointed and not really part of the, the painting flowing with the painting as we're, we're going. So that's why I mentioned this. We practice a few brush strokes like that with the side of the brush, good enough. And then we can use um, our needle point brush too as well. And we can do some more finer branches and things. Like that. All right, so we practiced our leaves of our trees. Let's do the same thing here. Olive green, a little bit of sap green, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Good enough. Over here, we would get our paint on, maybe make this a little more cooler color. We would just take this color, move it over to here with a little bit of cerulean blue to make it a cooler green. Dry off the brush a little since we have smaller tree shapes here. We don't want to have too much paint on the brush. And then we do the same thing over here. Perfect, look at that. And then over here we could do one more maybe. Okay, little mysteries. Okay, there we go. Once we, you'll see, once we put our trunks in and branches, these are going to look perfect. Okay, maybe we'll do some purple and blue here for the roof. Looks good. Kind of a grayish looking roof. Perfect. And once this dries, we will. Add some shadowing underneath the uh, eaves of the roof. And that is looking really good. I, I think this is really, you'll see once we do the trunks, and we can do that now. Maybe we'll take a break. We did a lot already. Let's take one more break, and then I think we can do our last bit of detail, and we should be fine with this painting. Okay, so we'll come right back and restart with our uh, branches and trunks of our trees. A couple... Uh, fence posts here and there give us a little more interesting uh, visuals going into the painting and we should be fine. Okay so we just got uh, finished taking a quick break let's get uh, back started here and uh, 
we're going to take our needlepoint brush and we'll work on some uh, uh, trunks of the trees and some branches. We'll go right back in with our darks, burnt umber, greens, the olive green, burnt sienna, a little bit of the blue. And I just make a little area where the roots are. See a spot that gets too much paint, you can lift up, make it a little bit uh, lighter. That'll make it look, you know, if you go with too many branches or something. So add a little bit of water to that, thin it down. I'll go with a number, number six here. A number six needlepoint, a little bit uh, thinner. Good. We'll get a few branches in over here. These are mu much less obvious, like you really wouldn't be focusing on these too much. If so, just a couple small with the number six needlepoint here, just to get some indications of tree trunks and some shadows under there. purple for the shadows, a little bit of burnt umber and purple. And the shadows are a little less uh, over here, the shadows will be a little more noticeable. French ultramarine blue, purple, burnt sienna. shadows are going to be just a little more shadowing for the closer structure here. Nothing too much, just barely visible the shadows. We don't want to go too much. So the sun is probably more up overhead, up high in the sky, so you're not going to see long shadows. You're just going to see indications of shadows very lightly. Uh, rendered and then let's get some darks here for the barn door and I'll just use the needlepoint brush it's really fun to work with this brush because you can really we could take our time with this and not have to worry about putting too much paint on since we're using a smaller format here this is like an 8 by 10 8 by 12 Okay, that's good. And maybe a door or two, not too many. A couple windows. A couple indications of some wood boards, but not, not too many, just a couple here and there. Maybe a horizontal board here. And same over 
over here, kind of a bit of a shadow on the uh, under the roof eaves, same over here. And some darker darks here just to get a shadow under there. Okay, that looks good. A little more distant. Cerulean blue, purple, maybe a little bit of the green. A little bit of a grayish color, just a little bit of a darker. A sporadic dark here and there along that distant mountain range. That will give it a interesting look. And that's about perfect for the details, not too many. I'll leave the color for, uh, you know, the color scheme very simple. You could go into, if you're really daring, some uh, cadmium red. And you put a couple little bits of, maybe some red and some orange. some water to it and gives it a little more interesting color variation and that's good. All right, so that's the details of the uh, the barns and the structures here, the country house and the barn. Now we'll do some foreground. And then for that we're going to step up our brush a little bit, make it a little larger. We're going to use the number six round brush, Raphael. And some more similar colors. Raw Sienna. Raw umber, burnt sienna, olive green, a little bit of blue, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll hold our brush this way and we'll, we'll sort of scrub some. This is kind of a, a desert kind of feel, but we could still, in this front area, we could scrub on some interesting colors just very, very lightly. There's a road here, so I just rinse my brush off and then that gives us kind of a nice diagonal across. And then some grayish color the other way as it goes in the distance. And 
there may be some chromium of oxide out here. And maybe some more of that chromium oxide over here. Just to make some lines. Some grass, some feeling of grass and fields. Sometimes, you know, you can change your game plan. I had a road in here that I had here. I think I'm just going to leave it fields. Okay, that looks good. I'm just trying to get those directional lines of the field. And we'll let this dry a little bit along this area here. And we could add in some brush and some twigs and things along here on these, uh, oh, this front section here. Maybe here might look good. Okay, let's take one more quick break. I'm going to find my hockey brush. It's in the studio somewhere, not close by, so I'm going to get that hockey brush and be right back and we'll do some final uh, brush indications here in the foreground and we have a completed painting looking wonderful, simple to do, um, big beautiful washes, big beautiful sky, and then some really nice details here along the, the middle distance in the foreground. Okay, so we're back from a break. I had to find my hockey brush. Um, this is a really great brush for doing like fine details uh, with um, grasses and shrubs and, and weeds and things like that. So we'll use this. And I'll dampen it up a little more. And we'll just go back into our typical colors. We're going to use the uh, olive green, burnt umber, some cerulean blue. And you just work it around until you find that nice mix you have that you like. Maybe a little more green. Okay, not too much water. You can see very little water. You know, I'm just kind of dampening the paint and the brush. You can see how dry that is. We don't want a lot of water flooding on the paper. Now we're just doing some fine brush indications here. So you can see just like that. Look how good that looks. And we'll do the same over here. Then you can get it more I'll try to straighten the brush out a little more so it's more straight here and then I'll try to get some of those lines like this here Variety is the uh, key here, you know, some, 
some weeds and grasses, a couple lines for some interesting Perfect. Okay, so not too much of this now. And using the hockey brush here with the colors we just used, you keep that really close to the bottom of the painting as possible. You don't want to go far into the into the fields here with, with these brush uh, strokes here with the with the hockey brush. Now what we'll do is I'll rinse that off and we'll use our we'll go back to our uh, needlepoint brush again so we'll have some burnt umber burnt sienna French ultramarine blue a nice dark for like a nice fence post and we're gonna have more details here these details are really gonna look good so here I think about okay let's do this here one there Now you can see I went pretty high up with this uh, fence post. That's really good. That gives us the feeling that we're standing a far deal away from this uh, barn here. And then we're going to do a few more fence posts over here. So now these will be a little bit like that. And then you can see as they go into the distance, they get smaller and thinner. So I'll use my thinner. Number six. And then maybe just a few. Maybe just a few lines for some, some wires. Maybe there's some wires here and that's all a little bit of uh, shadowing purple mixed with the fence post color gives us a good shadow color and the shadows were very minimal so just a little And the thing with shadows, you just remember with your shadows, uh, wherever you put your first shadow, let's say there and here, then you just keep all the other ones the same as far as the direction. So just a little bit to the right of the bottom of the, the posts, just like that. And we just remember that the sun is high in the sky, so it's middle of the day, so the shadows aren't going to be going far they're going to be smaller at the base of these posts. Okay, and then let's see here. We'll do a little more. more maybe a few more details here we could do. Do a couple chimneys here. Just to make this look a little more interesting, a couple little more details is gonna look good. Maybe some we'll have some farmers maybe working here with some people. So the figures can be real simple. You just add a little cadmium red for the um 
for the face, for the faces of the figures. So we might have a couple more figures over here, and then we use some just some grayish. some colors. And you can put, you know, maybe a few more details, maybe a, a tractor or something if you want to get more uh, in, in depth with some of the details. You could add like a tractor maybe or something like that, but I, I think this is good for now. I think we have a really good happy painting here, gorgeous like, you know, um, farm scene, farm fields, it's hot, it's sunny, big sky, cool, interesting barns and houses and things and some figures in the, in the painting, so we'll take a look. We'll, we'll take the tape off here. And, Okay, so that's the finished painting. I hope you try this. Have a good time with it. Remember, it's just a matter of uh, taking your time going through the steps. First glazings, the sky wash, bringing that right down into the foreground, and then you just, we work on the, the, the barns and the uh, house, the farmhouse. And then from there, some trees and some final details with some, you know, scrubbing of some uh, brush and some of our fence posts here. And that looks, really gorgeous and we'll see you on the next video bye bye